All right, so we're going to do things a little differently during this presentation. Um, I heard some of the people in this room, Chris was just saying that some of you guys have a hard time because that one's not working. Uh, it, if you guys, I mean, we'll talk tonight. If you guys think it'd be better to do it the way Dana's going to do it, this style, we could do it that way tomorrow too if it's going to be easier for you guys to see. So just give us some feedback after this presentation and we'll see if it works better for you guys. So it's just for some reason that the, their computer works on that screen and ours don't, so I don't know why. But um, how many of you guys uh, hired Dana to, um, for his services for copywriting? Okay, so there's a few people in this room. How many people have used just Dana's strategies that you learned just from you know, the free things he taught from his bonuses? And how many people have seen a difference, especially people that have already been selling just be, by changing it over? There's, I know Janae has. I know I have. Peter has. Okay, so Dana's going to talk about something that He's an expert, and I'm going to give his introduction here in a second. Uh, he's done an, an incredible job. We just uh, met him, you know, about a month before ASM5 was going to start, and he found me and approached us. I'm gl very glad he did because he is making a big difference with our team with the copywriting. So let me tell you a little about Dana. Dana is hailed as the number one Amazon copywriter in the world, having sold millions of dollars in sales for his clients on Amazon. He specializes in optimizing Amazon listings to maximize, maximize rankings, sales, and profits. Frequently, he works with his millionaire and multimillionaire clients with exclusive access to insider secrets and, endless, and an endless vault of invaluable resources and has brought his tool chest with him to take your listings to the next level. You guys want that? Because remember, remember when we were talking about the, uh, before about Amazon sponsor listings? This will also kick in your Amazon sponsor listings, your copy, and your keywords. So, I mean, I know it's the end of the day and you're like, Dave, this is a lot of information, right? It is, but this is very valuable information. And just know, too, we'll be posting the recordings. If you guys are like, oh, I'm not going to take it in, <laughs> we'll have the recordings up in a few weeks. So don't worry about that. But much of what you're going to discover today is nothing like you've seen on ASM or anywhere else with more positive feedback results and proof than any other Amazon copywriter on the planet. It's my great pleasure to introduce you, Dana Derricks. Let's warmly welcome him. Thank you, Dave. Am I good? Can you hear me? I made it. Thank you guys for having me. And uh, before I say anything else, uh, thank you to Dave, especially everybody else, the crew here. Um, it's a pleasure being with you today. And if you're wondering why I'm so well dressed, uh, the cold hard truth is that when you work at home alone, you don't dress up much. So my typical attire is shorts and a tank top. And then uh, I have a dog that I hang out with. So any opportunity to dress up, I like to take advantage of it. So um, we're just going to kind of jump right in because I have packed this hour. And I get to sit down. Jeez, this is awesome. I've packed this hour with pretty much as much as I possibly could. And I thought about the best way to uh, present this. And I thought about um, doing a lot of ad-libbing, um, of course, trying to wing it, and then really being prepared and um, I thought the best way to get the most value to you guys was to just write down pretty much everything. So I'm going to do a little bit of reading. Um, it's going to come across that way, but I think that I just didn't want to risk missing anything. So hopefully uh, that gives the best presentation. So we're just going to dive right in. Um, as Dave mentioned, um, what I'm going to present today is um, how to maximize your sales on Amazon by optimizing your listings. Um, and then we'll just go a quick overview here of what I'm going to present. So I'm going to start by discussing the opportunity that optimizing your Amazon listings can bring to you and help you claim the money that you um, are po possibly missing out on. Then I'm going to explain in detail exactly what I do and reveal many of my own closely held secrets to help you get the most out of your listings and your businesses. I'll showcase some of my results and proof of what I do. Then we're going to actually, I'll have a handout, we'll do a little mini workshop in which I'll help you either create or tweak your listing so that it's depositing as much into your bank account as possible. And then at the end, with time permitting, we're going to have a little Q&A session, um, and I believe it's been confirmed that happy hour follows, so try to hang in there as best you can, we'll all make it. Uh, the last thing, um, as I said, I really jam-packed this, um, and I speak kind of quickly, so I hope that you all can stay awake for it um, and uh, just yell at me if uh, anything is going over your head or anything. So I don't want anybody to miss anything. All right, so we're going to dive right in. 
So who am I and why should you listen to me? So for those of you who do not know, I um, arguably am the premier Amazon copywriter on the planet because I have the proof to back it up. I charge the most, I've been doing it the longest, and I have by far the most outrageously successful results. I'm fortunate enough to have a bunch of millionaire and multimillionaire clients whom let me have a first-hand glimpse into their business. One of my favorite things to do is to run tests and research using their money. So it's a win-win for me, and now I'm going to share a lot of the findings with you. I have written over 2,000 listings in my career, and I've generated millions of dollars in sales revenue. So this is what I specialize in, and I feel that I have cracked the code on uh, what makes Amazon list listings sell better than just about anybody else. I'm constantly researching, testing, and innovating to make sure all my clients and my own listings are ranking as well as they can, selling as much as they can, and are providing them the stable and sustainable income that we are all after. This has created sort of a tool chest of tactics and secrets that you won't find anywhere else, especially um, not through ASM. So the last thing, I want you to know that I'm here for uh, one reason, and that's to make you as much money as you can so that you can turn your business into what you expect it to be. So whether you're relatively new to this um, and you don't even have a listing up yet or you're a crafty vet with 20 or more listings, there's no doubt that you should benefit from this, uh, what I'm about to share with you. So I just want to go over quickly um, why is optimizing your listing important? And it starts with uh, me asking you this question. Okay, cool. So let me tell you a quick story then. Um, a few years back, I had a client named Mike who was a smart, uh, smart young guy. He came to me because he felt like he uh, hit a wall with his sales. He was doing pretty well, but he wanted to keep scaling up his business, so he hired me to rewrite um, one of his listings for him. I did my thing, fired back uh, the listing to him. He implemented the changes, and then I got this email from him the next evening. Quote, Dana, I wasn't sure if copywriting made a huge difference in our market. In fact, I was a bit reluctant to make any changes at all. Boy, was I wrong. Your copy changes increased the number of products sold by day by 38% in one day. And with this specific product, the revenue numbers were even more impressive. From $4,711 to $6,530 in one day. A per day revenue increase of $1,819.01 is no joke. Nothing else I've seen so far has resulted in such an increase. Even price changes haven't altered conversions this much. Your copywriting is absolutely killing it. It's absolutely stunning. You're the man, Mike, unquote. So I say that uh, for the purpose of just explaining to you that um, the opportunity here is tremendous. For that client and that product, just one product alone, he made $56,389.31 more every single month. Um, so that's kind of what lead, leads me here today. Uh, also, it allows you to, just kind of at a, more of a macro uh, perspective, it allows you to reach larger audiences with more keywords in the right places. So you're going to snag as much search traffic as possible. It'll convert more browsers into buyers. And then uh, it can pretty easily double or triple your sales within just hours because I've, I've seen it hundreds of times. And my favorite part of having optimized listings is that um, it reduces your wasted advertising expenses. So if you're going to be spending money on, you know, sponsored ads or sending traffic to your listings, this is going to maximize your ROI. So it's kind of like double dipping in a way. So you're going to get more money and you're going to actually spend less money doing it, which is pretty cool. It also is going to allow you to position and rank your products um, as highly as they possibly can. Uh, as you know, as you know, Amazon awards sellers that have multiple product lines that are doing well. So, for example, once you start scaling up and you, you launch more products, um, you're going to notice that the others are going to begin to sell well, too, because it's sort of a snowball effect. Um, and I know that you have been pitched a ton of software products, services, and whatever, whatever else. And as a fellow Amazon seller who has seen pretty much everything, there is, I have yet to see another investment that's going to return your money faster um, or as many times as this. So, uh, I just want to go over a quick little rant um, that's going to hopefully just save you guys some time and stress as a seller. That's just based on my own experience and horror stories from my clients. Um, the tables are stacked against you, and what I mean is, as a seller, um, obviously it's competitively, 
it's brutally competitive, um, but also Amazon in itself is just totally biased toward the consumer. Um, so to make a long story short, uh, what they want to do is they want to make um, the consumer able to compare dozens of products side by side and like quickly choose the one that suits their needs best. And that's essentially the opposite of what we want as a seller. And I'm going to explain a little bit more later. And undoubtedly at one point or another you're going to run into unhelpful, unqualified, and annoying seller support staff. Okay, anybody? Just, nobody? <laughs> Just me? <laughs> Probably the most frustrating thing though for me is the confusing, inconsistent, and unfair or uneven enforcement of the rules. What this does, aside from making my job difficult, um, it makes optimizing your listing even harder than it should be. So just be mindful of rules and don't obsess over them. Um, you're going to see sellers bending and breaking rules left and right, but that just doesn't mean that you're going to be able to. It's just totally ridiculous. Um, anyway, so uh, competitors are going to take dirty tactics to steal your market share and force you out. Uh, that's kind of what I like to say is that means that you're doing something right. Uh, and the good news and the silver lining I think that we all know is like it's all worth it. It's not easy um, but I have hundreds of clients who stuck, you know, stuck it out and that have been able to ditch their boss, work from home uh, and live the lifestyle that we're all after. You know? So um, it's worth it and, and I, I can tell you from hundreds of people I've run across it's worth it. Uh, so what I'd like to next share about um, with you the number one biggest mistake that I see Amazon sellers make um, and that I kid you not is costing them thousands, tens of thousands of dollars and can be corrected in a matter of minutes. Uh, I notice all day every day as I you know um, am on Amazon I see these poor performing listings and they're either done by ignorant sellers who don't understand the importance of having their listing optimized or they're done by cheap wannabe copywriters who don't know what they're doing. Um, which is good because it opens up an opportunity for all of us in this room. And that mistake is uh, that a lot of sellers think that people either A, they don't read the listing and just buy products, um, or B, they think that people read every last word of the listing just as you would read a novel next to a fireplace. And it just doesn't happen that way. The truth is this, people on Amazon, they're not reading listings, they're skimming them. Uh, so what we're going to move into now is um, kind of the nuts and bolts of what you need to do to, to optimize your listings. So, um, and to make them bulletproof, perfectly optimized for your customers and to leave your competitors scratching their heads. So uh, the number one secret to selling the most on Amazon that I kind of borrowed from my clients. Uh, is, does anyone care to learn that or? All right. Just making sure you're awake here. Um, so the one, I think the number one secret that I've seen is differentiation. So in other words, uh, you don't want to talk about why your potential customers should buy the product itself. You got to talk about why they should buy your product. Um, if you don't focus on why they should purchase your product, you're just promoting everyone else's product just as well as you are your own. And I'll, I'll dive into that a little bit later, some more specifics. Um, but the customers, are, they're going to buy, also they're, they're going to buy based on the benefits of your product, not on the features. So a lot of us probably know what that means, but for those of us that maybe don't, um, a feature is something that makes the product, whereas a benefit is something the product does for your customer. So I've got an example. I'm going to pull out my wallet. Uh, the features of my wallet, it has a metal outside. The inside is plastic with like a dozen little slots for credit cards. And it protects thieves uh, from thieves. Uh, and then the benefits of the wallet though are that it keeps my credit cards, money, and IDs safe and secure. It makes it much harder for thieves to steal my identity. And it won't get damaged if I drop it or um, and also it has enough space for everything so I don't have to worry about it. So you see there's, there's a pretty big difference. It, it's kind of subtle from the outside but it makes a big difference from your customer standpoint and that's what's going to turn your browsers into buyers. And also there's something kind of important to think about. Um, there's actually a process that I call a decision path that your uh, customer goes through when they think about making a purchase. So it's kind of like this. Um, 
most of us don't wake up in the morning and then go buy a car. Unless you're like me. Um, because I have seven cars. But that's another story. Uh, so what, you, what would happen is there's a progression. So you'd be driving your old clunky car around for a while. You'd be saying, you know, I could probably use a new car. Then you're going to start researching cars. You're going to plan a budget. Uh, you're going to do test drives. And then if your spouse says yes, then you're going to purchase the car. And what, what's different about uh, this with your Amazon customers is nothing. There's a progression. It just happens more quickly. So I'm going to explain that in a second. Um, just keep in mind, though, that there are different stages of the decision path. And by the time your customer hits your listing, they're in the last stages, which means they're kind of like, if you're to use that car example again, you're test driving the different cars. So you're comparing the different products. Okay, so... What you need to do is you've got to meet them where they are in um, the buying process. I'm going to give you a quick example. Uh, let's say that we have a potential consumer with a problem. They have joint pain, okay? And they're looking for a solution. All they know at this point is what? They have joint pain, okay? So they don't know anything about what to do to, tr to relieve it. So what are they going to do? They're going to either go to Google or something, trying to you know, find a trusted medical journal, um, they'll ask a friend, they'll go to a doctor, or they'll watch a doctor on TV, whatever their prerogative is. Um, in any event, they're going to be directed to the information that they're looking for. So once they find the information they need, um, and let's say that they've decided, they saw a recommendation on a product, fish oil, let's say a fish oil supplement for their joint pain. Now they're a bit further along in the process, and they've already done their research, and they're set on trying that product okay so now is when they go to Amazon to, to find the product so let me ask you this do you think that they need to be further sold on why they need the fish oil no they already know why they need it instead what they need to be sold on is why they need your fish oil instead of your competitors okay that's what's going to get them to buy yours since they already have the information that they need they're on Amazon looking for either the cheapest price, the product with the best reviews, the strongest dosage, the best value for their money, or whatever the case may be. So what's going to give you the most success is knowing that your copy needs to be centered on why and how you're better than the next guy, as opposed to, try to trying to convince your visitor why they need the product itself. Okay? Uh, so some things to just think about with that in mind. Uh, you're going to want to answer the question um, of why is your product bigger, better, faster, etc. Just simply saying that it's bigger or better isn't enough because uh, you're going to have to prove it. Also, you need to answer the question why you're, seriously, think about why should your potential customer fork over their hard-earned money for your product over other options and give yourself leverage, okay? So let's just quickly uh, review what just kind of the preface of, of this and then we can start getting this thing written. Uh, yeah, so I'm just slipping a little subliminal message there. And then, all right, so I can tell you, you know, just coming from other mastermind groups and how just terribly they're run and how you're just pretty much a number, Dave's group is just fabulous, and I mean that. So use it because it's going to, like I said, it's going to get tough, but Dave's here to help you. Everybody else is here to help you, and you got to use it. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Everybody's here for you. Uh, specifically about your list listing, um, I'm going to show you the format that, that is going to suit your customer. Um, and, and remember that they're living in a fast-paced digital world, um, and uh, we're going to apply that in just a minute. Uh, you've got to focus on how your product is different and better than your competitors, like I said. So don't fall into the tra trap that I see so many other sellers do, and they just talk about the product itself. Um, we've got to talk about what, what it actually does, and uh, that's what's going to get people to buy it. And then we've got to, again, meet your customer where they are in the buying process. So let's, let's get rolling on it. So step number one when you're thinking about optimizing your copy, uh, you've got to get inside your customer's head. Okay, so um, let's, before we even get there, let's think about some things about Amazon. So let's think about why are they there. Obviously, they're there to buy things, okay? We got to keep that in our mind, okay? People overthink it. Um, they're, they're not there to research why they need the product, okay? They're, they already know they need it, so people are there to buy what you have. We're just giving them reasons why they need it and then justifying that decision for them, okay? 
So your listing, in, in it, just keep in mind it has seconds to grab and hold your um, customer's attention and to convince them to buy right now. Because um, once they're gone, they're probably not coming back. And from experience, being gentle and subtle doesn't really work well. Um, you've got to be pretty aggressive in your selling. Um, and it, it's kind of like this. So hopefully this doesn't all fall all over. Uh, I've got a quick example. Um, I've got some energy drinks here. Um, and let's picture them all sitting on the shelf at the store at the gas station. And you've had a long day and you need a little get up before the evening drive. So you are, you've decided now that you want to buy the energy drink, right? So you don't really need any further convincing why you need an energy drink because now you're just looking for the best deal, the strongest you know, dosage of caffeine, the best quality or whatever. Uh, and you, you're just checking out the gas station. You've got literally like 10 seconds to decide which one you're going to go with. Um, and if they could talk, here's what they'd say. Uh, this one would say, choose me because I have the most caffeine. This one would say, pick me because I'm the healthiest. And I already drank that one. Sorry. Uh, this one would say, go with me because I uh, have clean energy that's not going to give you jitters. And then this one, the last one's going to say, pick me because I'm the cheapest and I taste the best. All right, so since you're going to be driving, you decided to go with the one that had the clean energy. That's not going to give you jitters because you don't want to be, like, super riled up for the trip. Uh, so do you think that, just thinking about this situation, would it have been wise for these products to have spent that critical time explaining to you why, they need, why you needed an energy drink when you already knew that? So how about if they would have subtly and gently told you how their company is so great, they harvest their ingredients in such and such a manner that's so good for the environment? Okay, no, not really at all. All you cared about at that moment was a quick and simple solution to your problem. Nothing more and nothing less. That's exactly what it's like on Amazon. You have limited time, space, and attention span, so you better give them reasons to buy and give it to them quick. Also, your listing needs to be... Uh, written and optimized for your customer, not for you. Uh, this is something that I do struggle with from time to time with my clients when I deliver work to them. Uh, just because something looks good to you or you think it's clever, unfortunately, it doesn't mean it'll always uh, work well on Amazon. In fact, I have found through my research and um, painful hours of testing that there is literally only one way to write listings that's universally effective, and I'm going to introduce you to that in a minute. I actually have a handout that's going to come in a little bit. We'll hang on just one more second. And then keep in mind, um, your customer cares about the benefits, not the features. So how many of you really care about how your engine converts fuel into energy to propel your car? I mean, it's kind of cool to think about over a beer, but it really doesn't help you buy it. Um, as long as it gets you where you want to go efficiently, reliably, and in style, that's kind of what really matters. Um, so these are the same reasons you, you need to focus on um, for your customers to maximize your sales. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and reveal the biggest secret to successfully writing copy uh, that works, and it actually weirdly has nothing to do with writing. Um, it's all about research, okay? And, and this is super important. Um, so what you have to do is you've got to understand what your customer wants, and not only that, but why they want it. So like I said before, you've got to enter their brain, um, and once you can, that's when you can write the most compelling copy you know, that you can count on to work every time. And something that may be really uh, uh, kind of a cool little hack for you is if you ever find yourself struggling to write or fill out your listing completely or honestly anything, um, it just means that you haven't done enough research. I do at least four to six hours of research before I write a listing, and that's no joke, and I'm pretty good at it. Um, I spend a lot more time researching than I actually do writing. And then something I think that's not really talked about much is that there's a big difference between product, keyword, and customer research. Um, so all three are equally important, but one often gets neglected, and that's one that you may not even have seen before. So we all know product research is sourcing a product that you can sell and that fits the criteria that you've set. Keyword research, we all know, is finding keywords with search volume that are relevant, yada, yada. But the last one, customer research, um, that's highly overlooked. It's pretty much um, figuring out what makes your customer tick, why they need your product, and how to present 
you know, your product to them in the way that resonates with them best. So one of the coolest ways I've seen to do that is, if you haven't already, um, you can discover instantly what people are saying and thinking about um, via Amazon's feedback. So this is literally a gold mine for finding out what people want and need. They're going to be either complaining or praising um, products, but they're going to provide you valuable insight and you know on how to position your product exactly how um, they want it to be. So the more time you spend researching, you know, honestly, the easier your listing will be to optimize. The more connected you're going to be with your customer, and most of all, the better um, better you'll be able to improve your products so they're exactly what your customers are looking for. Uh, so I think now we're on to the step of um, actually optimizing your listing. So I have a handout. I don't know where my little helpers are. Wake up, Dave. Sorry, uh, let's do them face up. So everybody's butt asleep? Yeah? You've been here longer than I have. Sorry? Testing? Like comparing? All right, I th am I back? Okay, uh, thank you, Dave, for handing that out. Um, can you please all just go to page one, the, the one that has uh, the three columns? Okay, so uh, what you have here is three columns. One is for keywords, you know what that is. One is for benefits, you know what that is. And the last one is for connections and proof. Uh, so basically what the third one is, is it's for um, backing up the benefits because without proof, they're just kind of empty claims. So let's go ahead and um, fill out your first column with a good keyword that comes to mind. Okay, if you have multiple products or, um, you know, a lot of, uh, you haven't decided on one yet, just choose one, okay? So write down whatever keyword in the first column. I'm going to go through an example in a second too. Okay, and then think about, like, what the most important benefit um, that product does for your customer so um, think about like a problem that it solves and go ahead and write that down in the middle column and then in the third column you're gonna wanna um, fill out a practical reason that uh, the benefit is important so um, I'll just run through a quick example uh, let's say that we're selling a shower curtain. The keyword we could use could be shower curtain. Okay? The benefit could be that it keeps water off your bathroom floor. Okay? That's cool. That's a good benefit. 
Then the connection or proof phrase that goes along with the benefit, which basically defines why is the benefit important. It could be that it extends the life of your bathroom by eliminating mold and water damage. Okay, so suddenly this shower curtain, this $3 shower curtain becomes a tool that protects and extends the life of your bathroom. Okay, that's pretty cool, right? So let's just take, you know, 30 seconds to a minute and fill out a couple keywords and benefits and then um, connections or proof uh, phrases if you can. And by the way, we're not going to be able to like do the entire thing right now because obviously you don't have all the tools that you have, the software tools or any of the information you, do, you would at home. So um, we're just going to get the ball rolling so that at least you can know what to do. So just think about for like 20, 30 seconds some of the keywords, benefits, and then try to get into the you know um, mindset of like uh, connecting those uh, benefits to like proof phrases like I just did. You can do that as I go. And kind of the reason for this is once you build up this cheat, cheat sheet um, with your research, you're going to also be able to like rank each benefit in order of um, importance based on how many times you've read about it in the reviews. So like you're getting, the research you're doing, a lot of it's going to be through the reviews. Okay, so the more you see something listed like, um, let's say with the shower curtain, they, they give you a five-star review because, you know, it kept the water where it needed to be. So if they keep repeating that benefit, then you know that's more important and you should rank it higher on your list. Okay, makes sense? And um, uh, trust me when I say this is a serious shortcut when it comes to writing your listing um, because what you're going to end up doing is just simply copy and pasting this into your listing. Um, so uh, it is, I would be shocked if it wasn't the fastest way to write a killer listing. Um, and then one kind of key concept is you want to make sure to use all the space possible in your listing because uh, it's kind of like this. If you're going to sit down across from your potential customer, um, would you cut the conver conversation short uh, before closing the sale? No, you wouldn't. So um, you're already restricted enough on the space you have. You kind of know this, but just make sure to use it all um, and you're going to sell more. So uh, once you have the cheat sheet filled out as best you can, um, we're going to look at the, the title. And I'm going to preface this by saying, um, as you're well, probably well aware, Amazon's really cracking down on titles. Um, out of the entire listing, uh, this is the most important section to be completely in compliance with the rules. Uh, so make sure to double check the, the guidelines for your specific product because it probably has its own category uh, rules. Um, I have found the basic strategy that you know works the best for making titles that rank well to snag up as much traffic as possible and that are enticing to be clicked on is this. You're going to want to list out your keywords, your benefits, and how your product is different in about 200 characters. Um, some categories are only going to allow like 80 characters and some will allow more than 200. That's kind of up to you to, to figure out. Um, and again, you're going to, you know, want to find out what works best for your category and choose accordingly. And there's, lately, there's been a lot of discussion, uh, kind of why, or on leading with your brand name in your title. And yes, I am aware that ASM suggests not doing that and selecting keywords for your title. Um, and for, actually, for most of my career, that's how I wrote listings and I'd agree with them. But um, after doing some really extensive testing in the last three or so months, I found out that pretty much with great certainty, leading with your brand name is what I've found to work best. And here's like a quick example. So if you just... I'm not good with a Mac. Is that how you maximize it? I feel like my parents. <laughs> this side? I can't get mad at 
my parents anymore. Okay. So, all right. So I just typed in like dog bark collar. And why can't I scroll down? Am I being punked? Where's Dave? Okay. So, like if you look at this, this is page one. Dog bark collar gets a lot of results. I didn't look exactly how many, but it's a pretty good keyword. Do you notice something about these listings? They're all leading with their brand name. Okay, somebody toss out a good search term for a product. Not all of you at once, though. Ladle? Ladle? I like that. Ladle. Weird. Did I spell that wrong? I'm not a writer or anything. I... No, it was actually saved in, this is Dave's computer and it was saved in his, uh... okay, do you see that, do you see how this, do you get the point, okay, this is proof right here that, I mean, I don't, th I, I, I don't think it can get much more clear than that, I hate doing it, but I'm going to show you a trick that actually, uh, uh oh, God, I, f I consider myself computer savvy, and look at me. Okay, uh, I'm going to, before I forget, I'm going to show you a trick on brand names that you're going to hopefully like. Um, so, what I found that is kind of not totally with what ASM teaches is that um, what works best in the title is to have a good mix of keywords and benefits. Um, let me throw an example to you. So let's say that you're selling fish oil. I don't know why I'm so stuck on fish oil. But uh, you've got the same fish oil that two other dozen sellers do. Literally the same manufacturer. You stick a different sticker on the bottle. That's, pro that's problematic, right? Because how am I going to sell this as being different when it's literally not different? Well, here's how. Um, when they're gonna, what they're going to do is they're going to have a generic keyword loader title like this. Okay, omega-3 fish oil, ultra strength fish oil supplement soft gel. Doesn't that look like a bunch of keywords to you? Okay, now what we're going to do instead is we're going to write omega-3 fish oil formulated for maximum joint pain relief. Okay, so do you see how we slipped in a benefit and now our fish oil jumps out from the crowd to anybody looking for fish oil or, you know, for joint pain relief, which is a pretty big crowd. And even if our fish oil... Um, was even more expensive than the other option, your potential customer is not going to take any chances on the other fish oil uh, because it may not be formulated for joint pain relief um, and they're going to be willing to spend more for yours. Okay, so that is how powerful benefits can be, especially in the title. And then this is a big one to take note of. Um, you got to be mindful of words that aren't allowed like free guaranteed, um, and special symbols. Some people get away with it, but I have seen others get shut down for it. So um, there's instances where there's products that are like GMO-free or um, things of that nature. If you feel like it has to be in there, just say something to the effect of no GMO, okay? Just leave that word out because it does trigger Amazon's system. Okay, now we're going to craft perfect sales maximized bullet points, okay? Okay. This is the heart and soul of, the li of your listing, so uh, if there's one area to really focus on, this is it. Um, and lucky for you guys, there's absolutely no doubt that you've seen my copy on Amazon before, whether it was authentic or it was ripped off. Um, and that's because I actually invented the most effective format for listings, which includes the bullet points being formatted in the following. You lead with benefits in all caps, and no, it doesn't mean that you're shouting and then you end with lowercase proof sentences. And I'll show you exactly what that means in a second. And the reason that I created this format, it was because I was looking to appeal every listing to dual readership, which means that everybody on your listing is going to read it, both the skimmers or those who want to read everything. So the, more, the concept is the more people reading your listing, the more sales you're going to have. Here's a couple examples. Uh... Example number one is doing really poorly, okay? Uh, we're looking at, just focus on the bullet points now. Can you all see that? Okay, so there's not much there, right? 
Okay, bad. That's like sitting next to your, across from your customer and kind of like not talking, right? Oh, ladles are still up there. Make some soup later. Okay, example two. Uh, this is the polar opposite. So they did, a, which is, it's cool that they did a good job of like filling in the bullet points in the space there, kind of, but like if somebody's on their phone or something and they're skimming through this, that's just kind of one blob. You can't really skim through that, right? You got to kind of read it. And how many of you, when you are in the mood to pick up a good book, you think, hey, I'm going to jump on Amazon and like read a listing. People don't read these things, okay? The last example, and this one I, is done correctly because it's in the format that I created, is formatted for the skimmers, okay? So I don't know how large that is. Kind of small on my screen. All right, so do you see how somebody could skim through and let's say that uh, they want like a durable, um, long extending selfie stick? They'd be like, okay, sweet, universal, nice. Oh, rugged and durable, longest extension. Now I'm hooked to this benefit and I'm gonna read this. Okay, now I'm pretty well sold. Before on that big blob, if that was lost in there, that'd be pretty tough to pick out, right? So we're appealing to the skimmers, which is most of peop the people that are on Amazon, but then we're bringing it home with the, the um, proof sentences that follow it, okay? So if everything was all caps, then nothing would be all caps, right? So there's a rhyme and a reason to this, and you see, how many of you have seen bullet points with all capital letters on Amazon listings? Everybody, okay? I started that years ago, and you have just witnessed the reason for it. Everybody tries to steal it, and they don't know what they're doing. And then they'll end up capitalizing some of it, all of it, and they're not doing it right. You just saw for yourself, I do not tell this to many people, why that is, and how to do it yourself, okay? And I didn't even charge you. Thank you. Okay, so... Uh, like I said, that's by far the best and most effective format there is for an Amazon listing. Um, and the bullets are the heart and the soul of it. So um, what we, you really got to think about is just transitioning your reader's focus from comparing your product you know, to the other options. And then you got to rationalize the purchase um, into solving their problems. And the bullets are literally the most critical point to do that. So um, think, of, think of it kind of like this. Let's bring this down a notch. When is the last time you had to like really convince somebody to do something? So maybe it was to get your kids to clean their room, maybe it was a coworker to cover part of your shift, or maybe it was a friend to join you for an evening out. Whatever the case, you really had to sweet talk them into it, right? And explain to them what was in it for them. So if you had any success, you definitely did that. So that's kind of the whole point. You have to parlay that message to your potential customer. What's in it for them? Okay, and then we're going to uh, finish up here with the uh, description. And this is, look at it this way. This is the part of the listing that sort of ties everything together and closes the sale for you. And think of it as like your last opportunity to, you know, make your final offer as to why they should take the deal. And don't be afraid to mention what the, you know, what's going to happen to them if they pass on it. Um, and as far as the format goes... Uh, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to list out the main benefits again along with a few that you may have not introduced yet. Um, and then you're going to elaborate more on the connections and proof for your reader. So you're going to think about answering the following questions. So why should they buy right now? What major problems does your product solve? And then what does solving those products do? And then you're going to write your description just like um, the other sections in first person as if you were sitting across from your reader. And then it's uh, definitely worth your time to learn how to do HTML and using ASM's tool is awesome. Um, and then uh, making sure that it's very readable. And here's a couple exa a few more examples. So just focusing on the description here. The old colon cleanse. My favorite. <laughs> you can't hit the gym when you're on a colon cleanse. 
Okay, so this one, uh, kind of like that um, bullet point uh, that I showed you before, it's just a big blob, and it's super wide, it's tough to read, can't skim it, just totally, totally wrong. Uh, the next one. So I have to sift through all this. Okay, so this is the other one, the other extreme. So this one, although you can kind of like read through it nicely because it has so many breaks, um, the problem with that is that for the most part, you're going to be burning characters every time you do a line break. I think it's like, seven characters maybe, something like that. So think about how many line breaks they have. That's how many times that they could have been putting more words on the page that are gonna sell the product. So what a good one looks like. You guys all signed NDAs, right? Good. I forgot my selfie stick, by the way. Pretty bummed. Okay, so this is a good description. Okay, do you see how like, it's not a blob, it's not a ton of line breaks, but it does the same job that the bullet points did? Okay, so we're using the bold, we're using um, the, the uh, uh, line breaks, but we're also giving a little bit of, um, kind of like a little oomph to it, for lack of a better term. And then, um, if Dave doesn't mind, I'm, I'm just going to give some bonus tips and tricks to maximize your sales that go kind of above and beyond. No. Your, yeah. No. Nobody? Okay. So, uh, here's a few tips and tricks I picked up that absolutely will help your Amazon business uh, to maximize sales. They're not specific to writing your listing, but I think that they're useful enough to bring them with me. Okay, so I really wish that ASM would spend more time on choosing a brand name. Um, ideally, you'd want to choose a brand name that encompasses a major keyword so that everything you do, including writing the listing, um, will pull in traffic for your brand. And this works not only on, but also off Amazon. Uh, for example, the best brand that I've seen is called Oz Naturals. And this is really brilliant because what they're able to do is they're able to pull in the Dr. Oz search traffic kind of legally though. And then also they get to pull in the natural traffic. So if you think about like leading your brand name with Oz Naturals versus like Derek's Enterprises, like it's, it's so above and beyond that, okay? So like I understand like you probably already have your brand name and all that picked out, but just keep that in mind for the next go round. Can't believe ASM, yeah. Okay, um, this, this, is a, this is a kind of a cool one, and I don't know um, your guys' backgrounds, but a lot of you may be familiar with it, I don't know. Um, but I have seen one of the biggest things to maximize your sales is using a money-back guarantee. I'm a huge proponent for it. Um, and the reason is I have never seen a case where the increase in sales volume has not far outweighed the increase in refunds by having the guarantee versus not having the guarantee, okay? So to take that a step further, what we want to do is we want to tie a benefit to the guarantee and make it that much stronger. And here's a quick story. Uh, the client that I mentioned earlier, Mike, he was selling a weight loss product and it was doing well, but he wanted to ramp it up. His sales were roughly 50000 a month with that product and we took it to over $300,000 $300, a month by introducing the following guarantee. Lose weight or your money back. Okay. That's pretty bold, right? Now, even if you think that your product can work, you know, uh, if you don't think that your product can have a money-back guarantee, I would think about finding a way to try it. Um, I actually had a client, this is a true story, who sold dead rats as food for pet reptiles. And I told him, try the guarantee. And I crafted it as this. Your pets will love it or it's free. And it worked tremendously. Okay, he didn't, you don't have to love the rat, but if your lizard does, that's what matters. So to take this a step further yet, and I know it's getting late, 
uh, you're going to want to seriously consider using a lifetime guarantee or warranty, however you want to word it, um, regardless of the lifespan of your product. For example, let's say that you sell a set of shower curtain hangers. In all likelihood, they're going to last between maybe one and three years, depending on how much they're used. Most sellers would feel comfortable knowing the lifespan to give it a one-year warranty probably, right? Okay, unfortunately, this is what your customer thinks. Are these going to break after a year? Are they not designed to last? Why would I buy these if they're just going to wear out? So it's almost as if, and this is kind of dramatic, but it's kind of like when you put a deadline on a warranty or a guarantee, you're putting a timer on your product like it's a bomb, right? Who wants to buy a car that just rolled over 200,000 miles? Okay, it's the same thing. That's how your customer sees it. So instead, if you put a lifetime guarantee or warranty on your product, regardless of the lifespan, unless it's like you're selling like Cheetos or something, um, your customer is going to think, thoughts like this. Wow, this has been made really well. Awesome, I'm covered if anything happens. Why would I buy the other one that's not guaranteed when I can buy this one? Okay, so I know what you're thinking. If you may be thinking, if I give a lifetime guarantee, you're going to have a million people coming back two years from now trying to get a new product from you for free. And realistically, it doesn't happen. Sure, you're going to have a few leeches that are going to come change their mind. Uh, but the vast majority of your customers will never remember that their product was guaranteed or will decide to go through all the hassle of claiming it um, even after a few months. So again, the increase in sales volume will far exceed the increase in returns. Remember to sell on the benefits of your product, uh, uh, not just on Amazon, but in everything you do. Okay, Write the, with benefits on your website, in your emails, and even when you talk. Practice it, okay? You're going to notice your products becoming more ir irresistible that way. Uh, the majority of your customers seriously know hardly anything about your product. Okay, You are the expert, and that's kind of hard sometimes to dumb that back down. Um, so you've got to not overcomplicate it. Uh, people, they don't care how it does what it does, kind of like the car example. They just care about, you know, what it does. Okay, So just... Keep that in mind. Uh, and then as I wrap up here, we're going to, I think I got a couple minutes maybe for a couple of questions. Um, I do have some pretty valuable bonuses for you guys that I flew all the way with me from Wisconsin. And I am uh, actually missing my buddy's bachelor party right now, but that's okay because I don't think they're having any fun in the Wisconsin Dells with 30, 25 to 30 year olds. I don't think they're having fun. So, um, consider the following rhetorical questions. That didn't come up right. And if you can't tell I'm a copywriter. Are you ready to squeeze every last drop out of your listings? Do you want to maximize the ROI on every dime you spend on advertising? Are you prepared to take your sales to the next level and reach your goals faster? Um, honestly, it's pretty hard for me to really explain the value that... Um, the following options that I'll let you consider provide. So I've given you some feedback just to give you like a sort of glimpse on the value that I could provide if you were to choose to work with me. You certainly don't have to. Um, I do want to mention though that um, both of these options are on a first come first serve basis. So the faster the better. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to leave this up and then we're going to open up for questions for a little bit. Is that cool? Perfect. Did you guys get some good value from that? Nah. And just, just so you guys know, if you guys were to implement, let's just say one of those things they talked about. Like, remember we talked about lifetime guarantee this morning. I'm probably, I might get some feedback over here. Um, if you implement that one thing and you make, start making an extra you know, 20, 25% a day, that's a lot. Now think about some of the volume that some of us are doing in the room and we make an extra 20, 25% a day. That's more than a yearly salary. You're exactly, yeah, right. So, I mean, there, these little tweaks that you guys are learning, now, you guys, there's a lot of stuff today, yes? And we're only halfway done. Not only that, Ooh. we didn't even start even drinking any alcohol yet today. <laughs> you didn't. You said, right. We're in a church. So. I didn't, right. There are some people in this room that have. 
I'm not going to mention names, but I know where the source is. Unfortunately, I need to be on my game for you guys, and I'll make sure that... Uh, anyway, Dana, there was a, a couple days ago... I'm, I think I'm going to back over here. A couple days ago, you know, he told me, he goes, you know, I just found out my friend's having this his bachelor party, and I, I don't want to miss... I'm going I'm to have to miss the thing. You know, and I basically told him, and said, look, Dana, I'm originally from New York, and I'm half Italian. You're going to be here. <laughs> Actually, no, I didn't have... To, I was going... That was the next step, but eventually... I, I, first, I, you know, I said, hey, look, Dana, you, you got to be here. These people want to see you. You know, and so he's like, okay, I'll find a way to get there. And he was like, you know what, no, I need to be there. So then he got excited. But no, he's, he seriously, he had other plans. And um, I don't know how good your buddy is, but, you know, thank you for showing us that how important we are to be here, Dana. I of really course. appreciate that. So. If you would have saw me on the airplane sitting like this, like, the whole three-hour trip, it was awful. But I made it. <laughs> he hates travel. He said he hates to fly. Uh, questions. Let me line up some questions. Uh, you guys have questions? Come on up. Uh, take both sides over here. And uh, questions for Dana. I, I have a question while we have people come up for questions, Dana. Uh, Amazon is just implementing the new title list, the, the limitations on the title. And in fact, I got an email this week saying that, you know, I still have my titles at 250 characters because I've been able to do it. And they've told me that I need to shorten them down or they're going to suspend my listing and then they're automatically going to cut them down. Uh, also, I know there's categories in here that people are only limited to 80 characters. That was Frank. <laughs> no, I don't know who it was, but um, why don't we t take your thing off there and I'll give you this microphone. Um, what would you say to that uh, as far as the limit of, of characters? Uh, some people that we see other, other um, competitors are able to do that, but we can't, for especially new sellers. Uh, how would you address that? And also, I want to ask you, too, that uh, some of the people in the room here have been getting Amazon saying, sorry, you can't do HTML. How do we get around that? Okay, uh, great questions. First, can you hear me okay? Is this the good? All right. I'm, all right. Um, the first answer to the character question in the title, the um, best answer I have for you is to obey the 200 character limit that they just set out, I think, maybe in June. Um, and the reason that, just ignore everybody else for a second. Like, yes, they are able to do that. That's cool. But eventually they're going to get caught and it's going to get cracked down on. And you're just ahead of the game because your listing will be indexed before that. You'll, be, you'll have more momentum in a way. And they're all going to be, they're all going to have to do that. They don't have a choice. So I say just because the titles are so sensitive, make sure to just, uh, follow that uh, guideline for sure. Um, second question, HTML in descriptions. Okay, so I've, they've kind of cracked down on the HTML, and all you're allowed to do now is pretty much bold and line breaks. You're not allowed to do like italicize or um, colors like you used to. So for what is most likely happening if you're getting denied your HTML request, you have some sort of tag in there or code that they changed. Okay, so you might have an, like something that's calling for an itali italicized word or uh, a color or something like that. Thank you, Dana. How would we conceptualize the difference between the money-back guarantee and the lifetime guarantee? Okay, so good, good question. Um, a lifetime guarantee is more like product related. So if something happens with the product, okay, so then the money back guarantee is more satisfaction related. So if the, the money back guarantee is going to expose you more, but it could reward you more, okay? So if six months from now they buy your product and they decide they don't like it anymore, with the money back guarantee, you pretty much are stuck into having to, you know, refund them. Um, but at the same time, it pretty much eliminates almost all, all risk. Okay, so a lifetime guarantee slash warranty, I would call it, is more product specific, whereas the money back guarantee is more um, experience specific. Does that make sense? So when you write your uh, benefit or the proof, do you usually include the keyword in those? Yeah, there is a lot of carryover. Um, so there's no um, advantage for repeating a keyword in your listing, per se, like you would on Google and SEO or whatever. 
Um, but it doesn't um, harm you to do it. So it, just from a readability standpoint, yeah, I would, your keywords are going to flow through with the benefits. Yeah. So Dana, with the concerns regarding the word guarantee, so lifetime guarantee, money back guarantee, is Amazon not paying the same level of critical attention to that because you're not making a product claim such as guaranteed, or do you still have to exercise some, some caution in, in that regard too? In some ways, it's kind of a crapshoot because the longer you are in the game, the more you'll realize on how unfair it can be. So sometimes people get picked on. But as far as the word guarantee, I, I guess from my presentation, I meant in, in the title itself, because that's kind of a trigger word for their system to want to red flag you. And um, I try not to use the word guarantee. I like to word it more as like money back. So like, for instance, um, uh, like if I was selling this wallet, I'd say protects your um, identity from thieves, thieves, excuse me, or we'll send your money back. So you see kind of how you're, and I'm not an attorney, <laughs> not legal advice. Thanks for your talk. Of course. I got two questions. The short one is um, I thought that the bullets are um, HTML on the listing. Are they? They're not. They are not HTML. They're what? They're just regular text. Oh. So, so the bullet points are... Um, Hey, look at this. Okay, so that's not dry erase, or is it? Well, it's not. Okay, so can, do we know the difference between HTML and regular, like text? So HTML would be like uh, something like, and then you were to write the word bold, and it comes out bold versus just regular text, you would just have skinny letters, okay? So that, that's HTML versus just text. So this HTML that would bold your, your, your letters is okay in the description. Oh, a I'm sorry, I thought, a bullet point itself, it's a special character. The bullet itself, I would, the, here's how to answer it shortly. Don't use it because it's a special character. No. They don't want special characters. That's another, uh, whoever asked the question about the, um, a, your HTML getting rejected, you may have a special character in your description, and that's why it's getting rejected. Okay? So even, I used to use asterisks, this thing, in my description, and they got rid of those. So I had some clients emailing me saying, hey, my, d my description looks funny, and they stripped all the HTML. I said, what the hell is going on? So I switched from this to this. Okay, so they pull fast ones on you. They do stuff like that. So just go into it, see what kind of weird characters you have. If you have like a bullet or a check or whatever, they don't want it. Okay, or a trademark, whatever. Yeah, go ahead. I didn't uh, catch on the um, worksheet uh, what was this proof and connections thing? I didn't, this just went over my head. Sorry. So um, essentially what the proof um, and, and the connections, those are phrases. What they are is you're providing proof of, what, of the benefit because anybody can say, oh, this is going to save you money, this is going to save you time, yada, yada, yada. But without proving that, it's just an empty claim like everybody else does. Right? So then the connection you're making for your reader is how that um, benefit actually is, or what it's going to do for them. Okay? So like when I use the shower curtain example, the benefit was uh, it uh, keeps water off your bathroom floor. Right? But then the proof and, and making the connection for them of what that means is it's going to save their floor and it's going to extend the life of their bathroom. Do you see, does that kind of... Okay. Good question. So if you're going to put a lifetime warranty on your product, can you put in the description lifetime warranty with registration? Because what I've done is on my website for my brand page, I've put a warranty tab on it. 
And so they click that, send their information to me, and that's to register their warranty. Would Amazon slap you for putting lifetime warranty with registration in your description? That's a, good, a really good question. I hope you guys heard that. Um, he asked, um, in regard to um, the lifetime warranty, um, would it be advisable to um, kind of make it um, dependent on registering that warranty off of Amazon? Um, and I think, it, obviously, that, that strategy is brilliant and go for it. Um, it's going to help you to create your list of um, off Amazon. The thing is, I can't sit here and say, like, yes, do that in the description because especially as you grow, you're going to see your competitors blowing the whistle on you, and that just kind of makes you a sitting duck. You know what I'm saying? So, yes, it would help you, but at what cost or what risk? That's kind of something you'll have to think about. And I just personally, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Even though it's a really good strategy, I just think it kind of exposes you to just a little bit of headache. Sorry I don't have a better answer. Um, sorry, it's not really a question. I was just going to say it's much safer and easier to put it on the inserts. That way, you know, Amazon can't flag or see exactly. anything. Right. And you'll have it 100% for every single item sold. Exactly, so, which is what you probably already do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sorry, um, last one. Last one. Last one. Uh, Make it good. That's part of that um, in, in regards to now on the follow-up emails sequence, is it permissible to include that in our follow-up email sequence to say the guarantee, warranty, whatever, if you register on this to this uh, and put our uh, web address for them to? Unfortunately, it's not okay. because <laughs> Amazon, like I said, they stack the deck against you and they want to keep it separate. But in an insert, much harder to get caught. <laughs> Thank you, Dana. Thank you.